The community of Lewiston, Maine, is still reeling after the mass shooting that took 18 lives. Days after the shooting, they came together for a vigil to honor the victims. As they try to get back to some sense of normal, the tragedy is leading to renewed calls for legislative action on gun safety reform. Even Maine Congressman Jared Golden, a Lewiston resident, has reversed his long-held opposition to an assault weapons ban. He has asked for forgiveness and support from those affected and urged his congressional colleagues to do something. The time has now come for me to take responsibility for this failure, which is why I now call on the United States Congress to ban assault rifles like the one used by the sick perpetrator of this mass killing. But in a narrowly divided Washington, D.C., it's unlikely that any bills will actually move forward. I spoke with South Carolina Congressman James Clyburn about just that. He is the assistant Democratic leader in the House. And my first question was, is Congress ever going to address the unfettered access to guns in this country? I just came in from Charleston. I did three events down this day. Uh, and I was in the vicinity uh, of uh, Emmanuel Amy Church and was uh, interacting with people at the uh, National Association of Long uh this afternoon. And some discussion came up uh, about this, uh, the issue that we have with gun safety and ownership in this country. We are in a very bad place, and we need to do something about this. In fact, I was in a discussion with uh, two or three people last night about what happened over in Australia uh, when there was a mass shooting like this, how the country react uh, and reacted in such a way they have not had one since. And we have had uh, more than one a day uh, here in the United States stage this year. That is unacceptable, and I think the time has come uh, for us to get real serious about this whole issue of gun ownership, gun safety, and how we purchase guns, who will be allowed to purchase them. Uh, yes, hmm. with this uh, gentleman, there was a mental health issue. But the problem is, when it was discovered, I understand they spent two weeks in a facility. Nobody took any steps, it seems, to make sure that this gentleman, who had been trained in firearms, it had been discovered uh, that he had a mental problem by people in the military. What was done to make sure that he uh, did not have uh, any guns at his disposal? Because he was always really fantasizing about shooting up uh, a military installation. So, so we just have to do— um, Yes. Yeah, Assistant Leader Clyburn, then, so I think a lot of folks listening to this, to this would say, okay, um, then what is Congress going to do? And understanding that the Republican conference just selected and elected um, Congressman Mike Johnson of Louisiana as the next Speaker of the House, and in the aftermath of this most recent mass shooting, he had a lot to say about prayer and many other things, not much to say about policy and guns. Well, you know, there's a side to prayer that we all uh, should take in this talk, and that is, it's found there in the second chapter of James, if I might be a little bit uh, biblical here. And it says, prayer, faith, an expression of prayer without works mm. is dead. Amen. And so just to talk about your faith and to talk about prayers and thought and do nothing, that's not a fulfillment of the Scripture. And so I would say uh, to the new uh, speaker, uh, take it uh, to the next step uh, that James, the brother of Jesus, took it, uh, and that is to act on your faith, because otherwise it is an empty gesture. Uh, we have reporting that um, House members are going to get a briefing uh, this week. 
and you all will be t potentially be taking up uh, the aid package for Israel and Ukraine. Is, do, what can you tell us about that package coming forward? Uh, and is there any conversation also about having a conversation, a hearing even, about guns, about this latest mass shooting uh, amongst, I know Democrats are talking about it, but I'm talking about the bipartisan, potential for bipartisan work here on this. I don't know that there's anything happening bipartisan on this issue. I hope that we will bring this package this week for Israel and for Ukraine and for the border. These three things need to be wrapped into one package and put before the body and acted on. Uh, the president has acted, uh, is sending us uh, his proposal. It's there. Uh, I think it's a little uh, bit more than a lot of people uh, think is necessary. But they have done the work. They've studied the issues and put the thing on the floor. And let's have the debate on the floor, just talking about it. Uh, in, co in, in committee rooms will not do what needs to be done, because we need to be discussing these things in o open. Now, the new speaker said that he's going to be known for transparency. I can think of no better way uh, to be transparent, to do these things in the sunlight, in the sunshine, if you please, uh, and let's get these bills discussed and passed. We will be watching for that. Before I let you go, sir, Minnesota Congressman Dean Phillips, uh, he has announced that he is running for president on the Democratic t uh, ticket. He's running in the Democratic nomination in the Democratic primary. I'm using quotes. You have been very active in presidential politics. That's how I know you. What do you think about mm -hmm. Congressman Phillips and this decision that he's made? Well, you know, the first thing you have to do in this business is to demonstrate your commitment uh, to your party and your party's agenda. Uh, and I do believe uh, that what uh, Dean Phillips is doing here is disrespectful uh, to the titular head of our party, the president of the United States. Uh, it is disrespectful uh, to a significant base of our party. Uh, the president has laid out uh, a calendar that we all should be embracing. And if he wants to run, he ought to honor the calendar. Uh, the calendar says that the first primary uh, will take place in South Carolina. No, he's not going to come to South Carolina. He's bypassing South Carolina. And he's going to run in New Hampshire. And that's not the calendar. Uh, that disrespects uh, the voters here in South Carolina. And let me add. The voters of South Carolina, the Democratic voters in South Carolina, uh, have demonstrated time and time again for decades that we produce good, not just good, but great candidates, because uh, our choices have turned out to be the winners. Uh, it's the people who run in these other primaries that don't reflect uh, the demographics uh, of our party. Uh, when it comes to the, elect the general elections, South Carolina does. So why won't he come to South Carolina and expose himself uh, to Democratic voters uh, rather than violating the procedure that laid out by the president, uh, who was a titular head of our party, uh, and uh, not regarding it? I think it's very disrespectful, uh, and I am a, a bit, uh, uh, mm. just a little bit disappointed. Uh, in the intros for doing this. South Carolina Congressman and the Assistant Democratic Leader, Jim Clyburn. Thank you very much, sir.